Well, good afternoon and uh, welcome uh, to our third week of uh, research methods. I am very pleased in the homework that was submitted, um, the searches that were done uh, for your practice on assignments. Uh, do want to remind everybody to make sure that you follow the instructions uh, on your homework. I hate to subtract points from it, uh, but if you will not follow the requirement, like word count, for example, or the last practice assignment, we said four. Uh, so I would hate to subtract points because you submitted three or two. So if you're, I'm asking for four, you have to provide four. Um, if you're going to be late for whatever reason, let me know in advance, okay? I am, I am, uh, I am flexible. I know, and I apologize if I came on too strongly for our first week. Um, and I, I, I sincerely apologize for that. I, I guess I was being frustrated with some of my students from the last uh, quarter uh, that were showing uh, this interest in their studies. And, and it boggles my mind that that's happening in Bible colleges. But uh, I am very flexible. Uh, as long as you have a good excuse as to why you're going to be late, I will give you extension. Uh, as you can see, I'm beginning to critique your work, and the reason for me critiquing your work is not to pick uh, fights with you. That's not the point. That's not the goal. I am hoping to prepare you for a lifetime of uh, educational pursuits. Even if your goal is just to get an AA degree, um, maybe you would change your mind and maybe you will proceed with getting a bachelor's degree. And maybe after your bachelor's, you're going to proceed with a master's degree and so on and so forth. And I pray that you do. Uh, but I am preparing you uh, for academic writing. And when you write academically, you have to be clear, you have to be precise. And if it's a little unclear, I will deduct points and I will tell you where it, where it seems where it's unclear. If you're not precise, if you're talking about A, but you're actually talking about B, but you're not precise, I will also call you out. Uh, if, what your, if your argument is illogical or doesn't make sense, or if you're using scriptures out of context, I will also call you out, and I will have to grade you on that. Not Again, not to be picky, but because I'm preparing you to be precise. I'm preparing you to be clear in your uh, academic writing. So please don't take offense. I will point out where you are... Uh, uh, where it is in your homework that you were unclear. Um, so again, uh, please, some people shut down when they see critiques. I don't want you to shut down. I want you to receive it with grace. You can know, at least for me, if I'm critiquing you, it's coming from the spirit of uh, truth. It's coming from the spirit of uh, where I want to build you up. Okay, I don't want to tear you down. I want to build you up. Now, sometimes I come, I come a little bit too strong, and I'm passionate about it. That's why I'm in the field of education, because I'm passionate about truth, especially truth about the Word of God. I've read a lot of your chosen topics, and right now, everything is general. So, I, this week, we're talking about writing a good thesis statement. And so, a good thesis statement requires that we dig down further. So, for example, you want to write about the rapture of the church. So the rapture of the church is a general topic. What about the rapture of the church are you writing about? So you have to be specific about it. So specificity is one of the characteristics of a strong thesis statement. So when you choose a topic like rapture, you have to narrow it down. What, are you, what specifically about the rapture are you trying to write? And so the, the second uh, property of a good thesis statement is precision. You have to be able to use correct terms. You have to be able to use correct definitions. It, the, the thesis statement has to be precise enough to allow for coherent arguments and to remain focused on the topic. In other words, you want a thesis statement where you can form a coherent argument for or against it. Okay? You know, you, you don't want to write something like, Jesus is coming back. Uh, yeah, Jesus is coming back. It says so in, the, in, in God's Word. But what about specifically uh, with Jesus' return are you writing about. So you have to be able to argue your thesis statement. Okay, You're going to write something, you're making a stand about something, 
and you have to be able to argue it. So for example, if you say uh, rapture, right? That's general. You want to uh, narrow it down to something uh, more precise. Okay, pre-tribulational rapture. Okay, what about the pre-tribulational rapture? Maybe you want to argue that the pre-tribula the pre-tribulational rapture was not invented by Nelson Darby, but it has been the teaching of the Bible ever since uh, the early church. Because there were some that says that the pre-tribulational rapture was only invented in the 1800s by Nelson Darby. That's for me. That's not correct. That's not true. Uh, I would argue, if I'm writing about the rapture, I would argue about the pre-tribulational rapture even as early as the early church. Okay? So, you have to be able to argue it. You have to be able to demonstrate it. So, you have to be able to demonstrate it from your sources. Okay? So, if I'm writing that the pre uh, the pre-tribulational rapture of the church has, been, has always been the teaching of Jesus and the church... And then I, I should be able to demonstrate that based on writings of the early church. Okay? Now, a thesis statement also needs to be forceful. Okay? It, when you write a forceful thesis statement, it shows the reader that you are, in fact, making an argument. You're making a stand about something. That's what, basically, a paper should be. Okay? And you also have to be confident. Phrases like, I feel or I believe, actually weakens uh, your sense of confidence. So instead of saying, I believe, you can say, scriptures have told us, okay, or records show, or uh, testimonies of whatever reveal, okay? You're not standing on just your own opinion, but you're basing it on fact or evidentiary fact. Okay, all right. That is my uh, uh, tip for today. Again, we have to be specific. We have to be precise. We have to be able to argue. You have to be able to demonstrate your thesis statement. You have to be forceful and you, it has to be confident. Okay, all right. I wish you all uh, a good week. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Again, if you're going to be late, let me know. Uh, if you are late for whatever reason and you don't let me know, I'm going to mark you as late. So please let me know if you have any issues. Like, um, I understand that uh, this week some of you didn't have library access. That's fine. I get it. Uh, and then we're working on it so that um, every quarter when uh, the school starts, you should have access to the library. But anyway, I want to wish you the best. I pray for your great for God's grace and blessings upon you uh, again I am going to be looking closely at your writing please invest in grammarly okay I am a non uh, native English speaker English is my close uh, second language I am from the Philippines I speak Tagalog I was almost 18 when I moved to the United States so English is not my, uh, my first language. And so I rely on Grammarly to help me. Sometimes I mix my prepositions. Uh, but I, I rely on Grammarly to correct that for me. So, I mean, we, we should be, we are blessed that we live in a time where we have things like Grammarly, okay? Um, so use that. I, I am fine with you using Grammarly. It's not cheating. It's a, it's a tool for you, especially for those who are uh, non-native English speakers like me. So please utilize whatever you need to utilize. Read and reread your work before submitting it. Because I will grade you on grammar. I will grade you on formatting. It has to be formatted specifically by MLA standards. I will grade you on substance. I will grade you on precision okay I will grade you on um, critical thinking you know in, our, in your class discussions try uh, avoid uh, writing things that have no um, that have no inherent uh, value uh, keep the greetings to a minimum uh, you know like uh, even things like I agree with what you said okay don't just say I agree with what you said Tell the classmate you're replying to why you agree 
or maybe add something to it. Okay, if, if you say, I am so blessed and I like your topic and I, I agree with you, you didn't really add anything of substance there. I'm still kind of uh, gracious in your in grading you with your re replies, but you have to, there has to your, your replies must be substantive. In order for you to get a good grade from me, your replies has to be some substantive, not just, oh, I like that, oh, I, I'm so blessed to have that, okay? Um, some of you go, go to uh, personal testimonies. That's not substantive. Add why you believe that, okay? I, I like your topic. I'm interested in that topic because I feel it will benefit the church or because I feel that most people don't know what this is about. And then you cite examples. That's what it means to write something substantive. Not, not something like, oh, I'm so happy with your chosen topic. I feel uh, blessed to read something like that. I do believe that God is good. We all know God is good. Or God is faithful. We all know God is faithful, right? What about it? That, you know, I want you to dig deeper. I hope it, it makes sense. If not, feel free. Email me, text me. See, uh, Professor, Dr. Silo, I don't know what, you're t what, what do you mean by this. I'll be more than happy to give you a call and explain to you what it is. Okay? All right. I wish you a good week. God bless you. May the Lord Jesus bless and keep you. May the Lord Jesus make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord Jesus turn his face towards you and give you peace. In his name. Amen.